Hey guys, welcome to this lesson on standard form. Today, this lesson is going to be an introduction to standard form. So you're going to learn how to put numbers into standard form and recognize when a number is not in standard form. Now, before we begin with these questions that I have, and I have a few more after this as well, um, I want to explain to you what is standard form. Standard form is used when we can't represent or we don't want to represent um, a very, very large number or a very, very small number. For example, the weight or the mass of the earth, not the weight because it's obviously maths. The physics guys out there will be like shouting, hey, the earth doesn't have a weight, it has a mass. Okay, so the mass of the earth, okay? We can't represent it because it's really, really huge. You will have so many zeros. Or the, the mass of an atom or an electron or something like that, which is really, really small and it will have 0.000, .000 because we can't keep writing that when we want to represent it in a book, for example. So this is why we use standard form. Now, the important thing is standard form has this format, okay, where you have this right there. Now, this number here, what goes in here has to be a number between 1 and 10. So a number between 1 and 10. So you could have 1.1, 3.1 and 9.8 or something like that, okay? You can't have 0 0.3, for example, because that's not more than 1, okay? And then you have this times by 10 to the power of a value, okay, whatever the index number is, which you'll have. You'll either have a positive um, index number here or a negative index number. And here are some examples, okay? Now, this is an ordinary number, and this is in standard form. So, as our first exercise, I'm going to get you to practice writing an ordinary number into standard form and a number already in standard form into an ordinary number, right? So, let's begin. So, if we have a look at this number here, we've got uh, 384,000. So, of course, our number has to be between 1 and 10. So, we're going to only have to have 3 here. So, to have 3 here, we will basically put a decimal point right there, okay? Um, obviously, we're not going to do it here. This is just for demonstration purposes. So, we're going to have 3.84. Now, these zeros, I don't need to write them. Um, I can just largely ignore them. And we're going to have times 10 to the power of something. Now, what is that something? Now, if you notice, we put the decimal place right there or the decimal point right there. Currently, the decimal place is, oops, sorry. The decimal place is right here. So we ask ourselves, how many steps does this free have to take to get to this position right there, which is right here, right? So it takes one, two, three, four, five, steps. So therefore, we are going to have a power of positive 5. And as this 3 goes to this position, this 8 and these 4 and all these zeros will be pushing along as well. So that's where they end up on the other side, okay? But this is standard form, 3.84 times 10 to the power of 5. If you were to put this into your calculator, your calculator should give you this answer. If your calculator doesn't refuse to, that is, because sometimes calculators keep the answer in standard form. So now we move on to this number, 0 0.0037. So we want to have 3 point something, and in this case, the something is our 7 right there, okay? Times 10 to the power of a value, the index number. So this time, the 3 has ended up on this side of the decimal place. So how does it end up there? Well, 1, two, three. It will take three steps to get there. Now, because this number is unlike this number, which is a huge number, this is a very small number, and it's had to go into the integer area from being a decimal, we'll add a negative there to indicate that. So one, two, three steps, but with a negative. So the answer is, in standard form, 3.7 times 10 to the power of minus three. So this is how you put numbers, which are ordinary numbers, into standard form. Let's have a look to see how we make numbers which are already in standard form and write them as an ordinary number. All right, so we've got 2.86 times by 10 to the power of 4. Now, this 4 is very important. That tells us how many steps we need to take any of these numbers because remember, the others will follow along. So what you can do for this, this is what I like to do, is I choose a number, okay? Now, it's positive 4, which means this number will get bigger. Remember, we had positive here, okay? And this number 
was very, very big. And when we want to have a small number, like a negative is indicated, okay? So therefore we'll go um, the opposite way. So here, we want to make this number bigger, obviously these numbers will go that way, okay? So we'll have, let's just put the decimal place here for now. And we want to make four steps. So um, you can pick any number, but I'm just going to pick the six here, because that's interesting. So six is currently here. So one, two, it's jumped over that. Two, three, four. So the six will end up right there. So let's write that six right there. And the eight is on this side of the six, and the two is right there. So what's happening right there? Well, because this is our decimal place, we need to put zeros in there. So our answer ends up becoming 28,600. So the answer to this is 28,600. Now, onto this number uh, 6.4821 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Now, remember, uh, this answer is going to get smaller, right? So this 6, or this 4, or this 8, or whatever you choose, is going to move in this direction, okay? So, how many times? 3 times. So, what does that look like? Once again, just make sure you add your decimal place, because that doesn't move. The numbers move around that. That's how I like to think of it. Now, I know that some people like to move the decimal place, and that's also fine too, okay? Whatever you uh, like. So, I will move it three spaces. So, this time, the six, let's just choose a six here to show you that I can change which one I want. So, six is currently here. It would move three steps. So, over the decimal place is one, two, three steps right there. So, I'll put my six here, and all these numbers will be along here. So, four, eight, two, one. Now, what happens here? Well, we have to put zeros in, and there's our decimal place right there. Now, you, obviously, this is a decimal number, so we also have to add a decimal here. So, our answer to this as an ordinary number is 0 0.0064821. Why don't you have a go at these ones, pause the video, try it, and then I'll go through it with you. Right, so let's go through this one. We are going to write this in standard form. So we are going to have six times one, two, three. So we moved it three spaces and it's a decimal value. So it's minus three. So you should get six times 10 to the power of minus three. This one, it should be 5.43. Let's just write that down standard because remember this value here has to be between one and 10. So the five for it to end up here, one, two, three, once again. So times 10 to the power of minus three because it's a decimal. This one, writing it in standard form. We have 2.23 times 10 to the power of six. So we choose one of these values and we move it six spaces. So uh, if you choose three, for example, and it's gonna be positive, okay? So therefore the number's gonna get bigger. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's write it down here. Um, so we get three, the two, two is gonna push along and all of these are gonna have a zero all the way up to this place, obviously not here, okay? So one, two, three and four. So the answer is this value here, 223, no, what is it? 2,230,000, okay? So that's that. Now onto this one. So 6.5 times 10 to the power of minus four. So we are gonna go into the negative. So our value is gonna get smaller. So choose the six if you like. So therefore from here, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I forgot to add the decimal right there. So you get 0. 0.0. 0, 0, and that's where the 6 ended up, didn't it? It's because 1, 2, 3, 4, so 6 and 5. So the answer is this. Now before we end this video, I want to show you an example of a classic mistake that students make. And that is when a number already looks like it's in standard form. So you might get something like this, and you're thinking it's already in standard form. Why is this number not in standard form? Because this. This is 28, it's too big, it's bigger than 10. Remember this value here has got to be between one and 10. So to put this number into standard form, you've got to make it 2.8. Now, because you've pushed the numbers this way, what will you do here? You would add another power. So it will become four. So it'd be 2.8 times 10 to the power of four. And this is the same with decimals as well. If you get given a decimal, for example, 0 0.8, uh, 3, 2 times 10 to the power of minus 5, for example. This is not in standard form. So you need to make this 3 come into this position right there. So it becomes 3.2 times 10 to the power of something. 
So what are you going to do? You are going to correct this. So because you're moving this way, you're going to take away another power from there to give you minus six. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will be doing another video where you calculate in standard form that will throw new challenges. So stay tuned for that one. Don't forget to stay subscribed and please share this video with your friends and family. See you in the next video, guys.